Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, just wanted to do a little prayer update and a little exhortation. Okay. So, I heard back, I want to thank all the brothers and sisters in Christ that have been praying for the Bibles that I had sent over, that God had blessed me with sending over to Belgium. And a lot of you guys have been praying, thank you. So I just wanted to read the little letter that the brethren gave me back and talk with you guys and give you a little exhortation. Okay. So, the brother and sister in Christ over in Belgium said, Hello brother, we are now back from our trip in the Andes in Belgium. It was a pleasant to be among many new Christians. Here we have also planted seeds so that the message of our Lord Jesus Christ might, may be spread. They have a great ministry going on over there. It was fun. No, it was fun. I think the, I, I'd use the word joyful and peaceful and happy. You know, happiness. But, because uh, I always try to tell brethren, remember, fun is flesh, flesh is fun. But uh, it was, they said it was fun and enjoyable. Joy. Okay. Enjoyable trip, and we enjoyed God's nature. We also, we always take our travel Bibles and extra gospel tracts with us. And I'm going to try to show some pictures, too, of, you know, their trip a little bit. And this way, we can give the people who do not have much time to listen something to read from the, from the Bible. And in this way, the gospel of our Lord is also spread. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get got Bibles into people's hands, but they also do gospel tracts, right? which is what we do primarily over here. It's just gospel tracts, and then if they want a Bible, a Bible. They do both. Praise God. We need to be creative in this day and offer as many ways and ideas as possible. Okay? and how to spread the gospel, how to get the word out. Like I said, sometimes you give Bibles, sometimes you give gospel tracts, sometimes it's verbal witness. Okay. We hope to reach as many people as possible who want to be open to the message in these days, in these and other, other days. We pray to our Lord every day that He may strengthen us on every trip and guide us and bring in His gospel. This was the last trip we did. We we have another one planned at the end of September and October, and then we close the year. So, Brother Sister Christ, a good prayer request is to pray for this ministry that's over, and these Brothers and Sisters Christ over in Belgium, that their trips in September and October will be fruitful. That they'll be able to give out a lot of gospel tracts, Bibles, and just witness for Jesus Christ. We still have to plan this trip according to our work at home. At home, everything is fine. We are still working inside and outside in the garden. Praise the Lord. God bless me with the garden. I always try to motivate you, Brother Sis Christ, that, hey, try to do some, have some hobbies that are good. Um, good working with the hands, okay? There's, uh, for the women, there's good sewing. There's uh, crocheting. Uh, there's a lot of different hobbies, art, uh, learning to cook, uh, different meals, be it like expand your cooking, healthy cooking. Uh, and whatnot, and gardening, okay, for the sisters in Christ, and then brothers in Christ, you can garden, but woodworking, uh, getting to uh, working on outside, like I have this hillside, and I work on it, and it's something I actually do look forward to every year, to be able to get outside, out of the house, get outside, and work on that hillside, and it's hard, it's hard work, but it's, it, to me, it's joyful work, because at the end, when I'm done, I look at the work, everything looks amazing, and it's something that I can praise God for. So, um, make sure that we're always trying to find good things, good things, brother says Christ, that you can do with your hands that glorify God. Remember, in all things we're supposed to be due to the glory of God, whether in word and deed, do, do unto the glory of God. Right? We pray to God that everything may be all right here too. Good news. Here's the good news, brother says Christ. The good news. The Bibles have also arrived safe and sound. I was looking at the picture of the, uh, the package. The package looks a little beat up, but praise God, the Bibles made it just fine. Thank you, brother. We can make a few families happy with their new Bibles. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you to our Lord for the safe and long journey these Bibles had endured. Okay. Praise God. And I want to thank you, brothers, sisters in Christ, again, for those of you that were praying that the Bibles make it safe. Okay? Uh, we just did a study on to give or not to give. And one of the things I said you can do, brothers, sisters Christ, is buy Bibles for brethren, whether overseas, uh, in your own area. Buy some Bibles, hand some Bibles out. 
There's some, if you know a brother in Christ that has an old, cheap Bible, get him a good one, like these leather ones, okay? Um, usually you buy the cheap Bibles to hand out to just anybody. Hey, here's the Word of God to get them started. And when they get serious, then try to get them one of these. Right? One of the nice ones. These are what I call the lifelong Bibles. This, these Bibles will last you a lifetime if you take care of them. If you mistreat them, they ain't going to last that long. There's some people that really get into studying and writing in their Bibles and taking tons of notes and writing here and there. And over time, the Bible starts falling apart. So they, start, they go through like two or three Bibles in their lifetime. But for the most part, these are really sturdy Bibles. Leather, really put together, good paper, and it lasts a good time. Life. Uh, last a person's lifetime that you should be able to give it to your son or your grandson. You know? Then there's, of course, there's the Bibles that look pristine. Why? Because they never get used. I understand that, brothers of Christ. I understand that. Bibles get wear and tear on them. But these Bibles are really good Bibles. Okay? Uh, I, the two places I get Bibles from, I try to get my Bibles mainly from the uh, local church Bible publishers, products, local church Bible publishers. Then there's home church Bible publishers. Okay, I'll put both links down in the, in the uh, description. Okay. I'll put both links in the description. That way, like I said, you guys can get some Bibles from there. Okay. But they're good Bibles. They, they made a request that the Bible my wife would like to Bat is back in stock. I, that's another prayer request. There's always prayer requests, brothers. Christ. Tons of prayer requests. The sister in Christ would like a certain Bible that they had, and it's out of stock. And it's been out of stock for a while. So if you want to pray for her that that Bible gets back in stock, and that we can get this Bible for her and get it over to her, it'd be great. We will let you know. If you or, if you could order it for us, we would appreciate it very much. I'd be happy to. It's it's a it's a blessing to be a servant of the Lord. For the rest, everything is fine with us, and we would also like to meet you if it's possible. <laughs> this is the third Belgian. Um, we personally think it's very valuable to, to be able to talk together as Christians in real life. Absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, yes. Face-to-face -face fellowship. Remember the study we did, Brother Sis Christ, together where we talked about Peter, or Peter Paul, where in his letters he's always saying, I hope I can come see you. I want to see you. I want to talk to you. I want to fellowship face to face. Letters are okay. Paul wrote lots of letters. But his heartfelt desire was always to fellowship with the brethren face to face. And today, I think we've gotten very complacent with the internet. And we seem to be just fine and dandy with just writing letters like emails or making little comments under videos and that's my fellowship. Uh, no, no. Our heartfelt desire is we should desire face-to-face -face fellowship. Paul did, we should. Now, it's not. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying it's guaranteed to happen, but it's another big prayer request for the body of Christ, that God will bring us together in the areas that we're in so we can come together as one under the Word of God, under Jesus Christ, all one in Christ Jesus our Lord through His perfect written Word, and we worship together. We, we sing hymns together. That's worshiping, singing hymns together, praying together, uh, listening to the Bible being read. Remember the Pauline epistles? They're supposed to, we're supposed to be reading the Pauline epistles among the body of the Christ all the time. Well, yeah, we are. Uh, to listen to good Bible preaching. Sometimes just to be in good company. Just to be in good company. We want to be in good company. There's times I wish I had brethren to go fishing with, so I'm in good company. So when I'm praising the Lord, there's other brethren praising the Lord with me. Hey, we caught a fish. Praise God. And we can talk about godly things, the Bible, and we can, you know, just fellowship. Talk about our worries, about our struggles with our faults. Uh, talk about the, how bad it's getting in the world and, and our prayer requests and everything. And, but more than anything, that's like fellowship. But there's times I just want to do things with good company, with brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, whether it's a, a picnic whether it's a group of us would travel up the coast to Gospel Track and stop at places, and down the coast to Gospel Track. It'd be great. Uh, I, like I said before, uh, offering my, uh, uh, when you go about offerings and tithing, you can offer your time. I'd love to go help a brother in Christ build a fence. If he had a property and had a hard time working on that property, like, you know, just gardening, 
I can go over and spend a couple hours with them, helping them with the gardening and, and trimming and everything and, and, and everything, just to be in good company. Right? So yes, I do get that. Right? Back to the letter. We ourselves do not know, we ourselves do not know whether this is po possibility exists. But our Lord will certainly find a solution to it if it's destined. If it be God's will. Remember we always say, if it be God's will. Okay? Whether we live or die, let it be God's will. What, how we live, what happens. I always ask that. Lord, if it be your will, can we do this? If it be your will, we can do this. The Bible also says, uh, is anything too hard for the Lord? All things are possible with God. Okay? And that all things are possible is good things. Okay? People will try to misuse the Bible. Uh, we're not talking about sinful way We're talking about if it be God's will, and it's for God's glory, and it's a good thing, God will make it happen. Right? Now, I can't see myself making it all the way over there, and I can't see them making it all the way over here. Uh, but who knows? Right? Uh, there's times where, don't want to get too off in this, there's times I've been praying lately, Brother Jesus Christ, and it's like, if I got a call to go somewhere, like overseas, to be an evangelist and preach the Word of God and to preach the Gospel and help out, if God opened the door to that, would I, I, part of me says I'd sell everything here and take two boxes that could go over with me of my books and whatnot, ministry stuff, and I'd just head on over. I just, I just, Brother Jesus Christ, maybe you feel the same way. I, I want house churches, but brethren, it, it comes down to this. How many of you remember Sheffy? The movie Sheffy. Well, if they don't want it, they don't want it. I'm talking about the campground meetings. Uh, bottom line, I'm, I would love to see house churches come back big time. I'd like to see brethren get back into house churches. And I'd like to see house churches start spreading like wildfire over America and up into other countries where people... In other countries, they're, they're already doing house churches. They're having to hide in some countries in their homes and let's, uh, sing hymns, listening to the Word of God being read and good preaching. But I would, I'd give all this up to be part of a full-time, what with the Bible considers a, a full-time ministry. I use Paul as the example. I know the Bible doesn't actually say full-time ministry, but Paul's a great example of that. Okay, something that you give your life to. There's face-to-face -face fellowship. Paul was an evangelist. He went around setting up churches, uh, confirming the churches as he was preaching the gospel. That's what an evangelist does. We're going to get into this later down the road, because uh, some people are trying to say, women can be evangelists. Uh, no, evangelists set up churches. They appoint bishops, deacons, ordained elders. They let them come together, ordained elders. They help set up the church and the structure of the church, how it's supposed to be ran, the people. And then they move on to another area, sit, preach the gospel. Uh, in the Bible, Paul left Timothy over here at this church to help set it up. And then he'd say, Timothy, I need you. we got to get back to gospel you know, witnessing. And I need you over here. And he'd leave people, Titus, Timothy, Silas, and they'd help the church grow and, and start go, do, uh, building it up in the way it's supposed to be run. And then they'd go back to evangelizing and, and traveling. Okay, There's more to evangelists than just preaching the gospel. And that's what some people don't seem to get. But the point is, is Paul is a great example of full-time ministry. Today, some people claim full-time ministry. I ain't full-time. I'm not full-time ministry. Okay, God's blessed me with putting out videos once a week. Praise God. But this isn't full-time ministry. Right? Um, I want to be in full-time ministry if God can still use me despite all my flaws and my mistakes that I've made in my past. Um, maybe God can still use me. He still is, but maybe he can use me on that scale. But I didn't mean to go off too much on it. But all things are possible with God if it be God's will and God's grace and God's mercy. We are already looking forward to this moment. Exclamation point. They trust the Lord. And I trust the Lord. But here's the thing. We will meet, brother says Christ, these brethren over here, you brother says Christ, we will meet someday. That blessed hope. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which remain shall be caught up to be with them in the clouds, and so we shall we ever be with him. Jesus Christ is going to call us home. That blessed hope, the day of Christ is at hand, and we're going to go home, the day of Christ, and we're going to get to see everybody. There's a brother I've never seen before face to face. I've never got to speak to him face to face. I've never seen him face to face. There's a day coming where we are. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. 
No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. On that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day, that will be. It's a good old hymn. I love that hymn. What a day that'll be. And that'll be a great day and we'll all get to see each other. I and my wife are glad that we have found a brother who wants to give his life for our Lord Jesus Christ, who has become a true friend to us and is part of our lives. I thank God for all the brethren. That whether you disagree with me or not, but the brethren that still love me, like the Bible says we're to love one another. And the Bible talks about a friend that's closer than a brother. Okay? Um, I've had brother, brethren that I've lost contact with. I've had brethren that went their own way. They didn't want to go with me this way, and they decided to go their own way. Um, and I pray for them. I really do. But I'm grateful for every brother that God's ever brought into my life, brother and sister in Christ. And I thank you for all of them. I thank the Lord for them, and I thank you, Lord, brothers and sisters Christ, for your love, for this ministry, for I'm part of Paul's ministry, um, but this ministry that's, Paul, that's part of Paul's ministry that God's blessed me with being a part of. I thank you guys for all your support, your prayer, the comments you make, encouraging comments. Uh, my favorite's when you guys add scriptures to the Bible studies, like scriptures I didn't use, or you might mention a scripture I did and say, this is one of my favorites, and it just lets me know that you're actually listening to the Bible studies, which is great. Some of the brothers are saying, hey, this helped me. This helped me get my life right with the Lord. This helped me in this area. This helped me in that area. And that's also such a joy and a blessing for me in this ministry. We pray every day that you may be well and that you may find rest with our Lord. It is difficult. It is sometimes difficult to be alone and have little or no family. But do not give up and live for our Lord. Do not give up. And live for our Lord and bring joy to everything you do. That he brings joy to everything. The Lord brings joy. I, did, I was reading through the, the Psalms. Psalms of Proverbs. One of them talks about how the, my, Paul, uh, King David is saying, My joy is in thee, O Lord. And sometimes I forget that. My joy is not in this home. My joy is not in the garden. My joy is not in the chickens. My joy is not in walking on the beaches. My joy is not in the work I do on the hillside or going for walks around here. My joy isn't setting out on the hillside. My joy is that the Lord is with me in all those things I do. My joy is in the Lord. And when you lose sight of the Lord, brothers of Christ, that's when we get very sorrowful. Sometimes we get sorrowful because of the wicked world, the condition of the body of Christ. Sometimes because of our own faults and failures, we have sorrow. But sometimes we can get into sorrow and we can get into a bad attitude or a negative attitude because we forget where our joy is supposed to be. It's not in these things. It's that the Lord is with us when we do these things. The joy, our joy is in the Lord. Okay. So yes, thank you for that. But like I said, the Bible, staying in the Word daily, helps us learn things. Jesus gave us life and we should, and we should cherish it both in good and bad days. Absolutely. Giving, that's the hard part. Giving God praise when something bad happens. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Victoria, she's, she's still barely making it, but she's tending to throw up a lot lately. And she'll throw up in the weirdest place. She threw up in the seat in the car. She uh, threw up uh, on, the, on the floor in certain places. And I'd be happy. And I'm like, okay, what are we going to do next, Lord? And I look over and I see that and I'm like, Praise God. I had to start teaching myself to praise God even in bad things, when bad things happen. You get a flat tire. Praise God. Those, that's not easy. Right? I've had brethren turn on me. I've had brethren say bad things about me. In their bitterness and their uh, hate, okay, their vanity, their pride, say bad things about me. It's like, I love them. They're my brother. I believe they're saved. I've had lots of people say bad things about me. The ones that really hurt are the ones that I believe are saved, brothers and sisters in Christ that say bad things. But to, say, to be able to praise the Lord and everything, and all things give thanks. How about that? Thanking the Lord when bad things happen. Okay? But we need to cherish the days that God gives us down here to live for Him, to be a light to this dark world, to earn rewards in heaven, the, the judgment seat of Christ, the, uh, the crown rewards. Absolutely. He will certainly, back to the letter, He will certainly be there for us when we need Him. Absolutely, amen, beyond a shadow of a doubt, amen. 
I've been through a lot of bad times. I've made huge mistakes. I put myself in those bad times because of my own faults, my own bad decisions. And God was still there for me. Even though I'm the one that was at fault, God was still there for me. I repented, fell on my knees, and He picked me back up. Right? He's always there for us when we need Him. Right? Here's the hard part. He's always there when we think we don't need Him. Trust me. You need, you need to get to a point where, Brother Sebastian, we need Him every second of every day. I need Him every second of every day. But there's times where you can start, God can start blessing you with things and you start getting distracted by this world, things in this world, and you just, I'm having such a great time, you forget that you need Jesus Christ. You take your eyes off that blessed hope. You take your eyes off Jesus Christ. Be careful. We hope that He may assist you at any time of the day and that you may be happy together with all your animals. Chickens, two dogs. <laughs> I've got chipmunks out there going crazy. I've got hummingbirds going crazy at this time of the year. Uh, just fighting over the hummingbird feeder. i got the record. Five hummingbirds at the hummingbird feeder. Usually I can only get one because one was a bully. So then I bought a second one, moved it down a, a probably... I want to say anywhere between 5 to 10 yards away from the, the first one. And the bully went over to that one, and he's the only one allowed to drink that one. And now this one, I'm getting like five. I got all five. There's only five places for them to drink. All five were taken up. It's a record. It was amazing. And uh, God gives you blessing and things. I get to see deer around here. Uh, I went up to my spot. Um, one of these days, I got to take a camera up there. I think I did way back when, but it's a long time ago. But I got to take a camera back up there again to show you guys. But there's a spot up in the mountains where I can drive up there. And I bought a tent now that I pop up just the roof part. And I get to sit underneath. And I spend hours out there listening to the Word of God being read. Reading the Bible for myself with the Bible. And listening to uh, God, uh, peaceful music, wordless music. And talking with the Lord for hours. And I was up there, and a big cow was on the road. <laughs> There's a big cow. So people have cattle up there. So the Lord does bless me with a lot of animals down here. Even skunks, mm -hmm. bobcats. I have to deal with bobcats. Uh, rats, mice, pack rats. Right? Declan over there. He's sitting there. <laughs> he actually got a hold of a pack rat. Pack rat thought he was hidden and wasn't. Um, good for Declan. Good for Declan. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Lord, for the animals here. And Brother Jesus Christ, there's got to be animals where you are. Got to be animals. Even if you don't have any pets, pets, but there's got to be animals around you. There's birds galore. I have the bird feeder out there. I get to watch the um, turkey vultures and the hawks hover. And one time I got to see an eagle. I grabbed my binoculars, looked at it because it looked different. I grabbed my binoculars, it had a white head. It was one of those bald eagles. God will bless you with things. Just sit there and praise God and God will bless you. God has a purpose for us, for all of us, as a family, as a brother, as sisters. Right? And that purpose is lined up in the Bible. Okay, yes, with that, that's, a, that's a faith thing that I have, you have to believe in because God talks about um, without faith it is impossible to please Him for he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Okay. There's faith involved, but the Bible does spell out our purpose. Okay. We're to love one another. We're to be there for one another. We're to take God's Word and hide it in our heart and live it. We're supposed to be a verbal witness and a living witness for this world. A light. We're supposed to let Jesus shine through us to this world. Not just in our words, but in the life that we live, Brother Sis Christ. Amen. Okay. We all have a purpose. But... Some people are using this comment for ministry, when it comes to men and ministry, okay? Purpose. When, uh, sisters in Christ out there that are praying hard, single sisters in Christ that are praying for good men, godly men, to be a, a wife, a, a mother, a keeper at home, to serve God that way, okay? Praise God. God will answer the prayers. Um, real quick, just hit me. God will answer prayers. I, I, I'm more that I've studied the Word of God, the more I talk with the Lord, the more I realize that teaching about, you know how you have people say, thank God for unanswered prayers. They have teachings. They actually have teachings on thank God for unanswered prayers. You know the only reason God won't answer a prayer? You want to know the only reason? King David says in the Psalms, that if I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. 
that's the only reason God wants to answer prayers. Oh, come on. No. They put out that teaching in these battle buildings that thank God for unanswered prayers because it's filled with mostly lost people. And it's filled with saved people, too. There's some saved that they're holding iniquity and they're lost. They're getting messed up by the lost people. Because it's all flesh fun. Flesh fun. Fun is flesh. Flesh is fun. And we've got all these programs that have to do with elevating the flesh. And, and it's just all about having a great time to get these lost people in there. And the lost people that they let in there are messing up the saved people. And you hold iniquity in your heart. Lust of the flesh. Worldliness. Idolatry. I know brethren in ministry that have chosen the world over the Word of God. They've chosen the world over fellowship with the brethren. They'll, mess, they'll wrestle the scriptures to their own destruction. But back to what I'm saying. If you hold iniquity in your heart, the Bible says, God will not hear me. God won't hear the prayers of somebody who's holding iniquity in their heart. That's why he doesn't hear the prayers of lost people, number one. Why does he hear the prayer of a lost person as they come to salvation before he saves them? Why? Because you throw your iniquities at the foot of the cross. You're not holding your iniquities in your heart anymore. You're giving them to the Lord when you come to salvation. Now for saved sinners. Here's how God answered prayer. You ready for this? Some of you are not going to like this. Ready? Because I didn't. And then God got me to say, okay, I trust you, Lord. I've been praying a lot about trusting, trusting, trusting the Lord more. God will answer the prayer with these three answers. You ready for them? Yes. No. Not right now. That's what I've learned in my life. I know 10 years. I don't have 50 years under my belt. I don't have 100 years. Yes. He'll answer the prayer with yes. Grant the request. He'll say no. That's not what I want for you. That's not right for you. Or he'll say not right now. Maybe later, but not right now. And the not right now and the no are the answers people don't like. So they keep waiting for a yes, thinking that God never answered the prayer. Thank God for unanswered prayers. When he did answer the prayer, you just didn't like the answer. You didn't want to hear God say no or not right now. And there's some brethren, and I've made this mistake myself, I'm throwing myself in there, where sometimes we try to force the yes. We try to go ahead and do it anyway or try to make it happen when God's saying, no, that's not what I want for you right now. So be careful, brother says Christ, be careful of those teachings and these Bible buildings of thank God for unanswered prayer. No, God answers prayers. If you're not holding iniquity in your heart, God answers prayers. It just not, might not be the answer you want. But God answers prayers. I tend to go with the uh, yes or not right now, but sometimes the not right nows are no. Okay? But we find out later on down the road that it was a no. Not a, it wasn't a not right now, it was a no. But brother says Christ, God answers prayers. He answers my prayers a lot. I remember one day praying, Lord, it would be great if the sun could come out. Just for, just for a few minutes, Lord, it would be such a blessing, Lord. And I was praying, and, and I was praying about a lot of other things. It was just a little prayer on the side. Was just, when it seems very cloudy out here, and you've had nothing but cloud, or you're having a bad day, just the clouds make it worse. just makes it seem so gloomy. And guess what? At 6 to 7 o'clock in the evening, because it's, it's, it was uh, at summertime, the sun came out. It came out only for like 10, 20 minutes. There was a hole in the sky, and the sun came out for 10 or 20 minutes, and I'm sitting there praising God. God answers prayers, brother says Christ. He always answers prayers as long as, long as you're not holding iniquity in your heart. But you might not like that answer to the prayer where he says no. He will say no, that's not right, because there's times we pray for things that aren't right. Oh, Lord, can I please just watch this TV show or that movie or this old black and white movie, even though I know there's something wrong in it? God goes, why are you asking me something you know the answer is going to be no? How many of us have done that? God hits me up, why are you asking me something that you already know the answer to? You got to watch out for those prayers. Well, but like I said, today with the professing Christian world, they hate the get the answer no. They hate not right now. They hate those two answers in prayer. So they always go with, I thank God for unanswered prayer. No, I thank God for answered prayer. And when you start actually having a strong walk with the Lord, you'll start realizing God has answered a lot of prayer. That old hymn, count your blessings one by one. 
Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. God answers prayers, brother, says Christ. And look, like I said, I just don't mean to go off too much. Don't, we could do a whole teaching on it, but God answers prayers, brother, says Christ. And I thank God for answered prayers. Right. Everything will become clear later. Yeah. He'll say no and it comes clear later. That's why it's no. Not right now. And then you find out later when he did grant the request or what you were praying for, you'll find out why it didn't happen before. Sometimes you just have to trust the Lord. Maybe you don't find out. You just have to trust the Lord. Why did he say no? I just got to trust him. Why didn't it happen when I wanted it to happen? I don't know. But I just got to trust him. Trust the Lord. Right. Believe in him and all will be well. Amen. Be sure to continue to work on your ministry, spreading the gospel of our Lord in every way. Give thanks to him and pray to him every day. I always hit brethren up with that. Are you in the Word of God every day and praying every day? Do you start the Word of God? Or start the day? Start the Word of God. Start the day with your word, the Word of God and prayer. Do you end the day with the Word of God and prayer? Do you talk to God throughout the day? This this is important. This is important. I believe every Bible believing, God fearing man or woman, anyone who's truly saved and born again, needs to get to the point where that's where they're living their life. They're living their life with Jesus every day. I need him every day, every second of every day. Talk with him. He wants to hear from you. Don't hold iniquity in your heart, and God will hear you. Confess your prayers. How, how, uh, part of that prayer at the end of the day, when I, at the, my day, I, I, pray, I ask God forgiveness for sins. You say, you, yeah, me. I, I, I'm a sinner, Brother Christ. I know for some people, they know that, and they just think I, I act like I'm holier than thou. Uh, to, compared to the lost world, I am holier than thou. Um, but when it comes to brothers says Christ, no, at the end of the day, I ask God for forgiveness for every time my mind wandered or I looked at something I, that popped up as a suggestion or I'm out in the world and there's just wickedness before my eyes and my mind starts to wander, I say, Lord, forgive me. I don't go one day where I'm sinless as a saved sinner. Remember what the Bible says, not only do them, but take pleasure in them that do it. So it's just up here too. It's a sin if you think about it and you're starting to take joy in those thoughts. Sometimes a thought can come in and you can throw it out real quick and God's not holding you accountable for it. But if a thought comes in like Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, okay, when bad thoughts come in and you start dwelling on them for four or five minutes and then you're like, oh Lord, I'm sorry, I don't, I shouldn't have, I'm sorry Lord, get, get back to praying, get back to talking to the Lord, please forgive me. I do that sometimes. I do, every day. I struggle up here every day. Okay? There's a struggle here with the flesh. A struggle here to keep God's word in here and keep all the wickedness out. There's always a struggle, brothers and sisters Christ. Okay? Stay in God's word and prayer every day, brothers and sisters Christ. We are all Christians with our own... Okay, it says we are all Christians with our own values and try to fulfill them as much as possible according to God's will. Okay. God's word. God does remember there's many offices. There's offices that, are, that, that we're going to be talking about that I believe are for men. And there's many gifts that both men and women can have. There's many gifts that God can give us to serve Him in the body of Christ. Okay. That being said, um, God's will is what matters. Okay. I know what they said, uh, own values. Our values need to line up with the Word of God. Period. Period. See, if, if we weren't going off of our own values, I know the sister slipped up, the brother, sister Christ slipped up. Hopefully it's a slip up. If not, this is a soft correction. If we all had the same values and lined up with the Word of God, there wouldn't be so much division in the body of Christ. If we weren't trying to corrupt the Word of God, wrestle the Word of God to our own destruction, trying to justify lusts of the flesh, worldliness, idolatry, if we weren't too busy trying to be respecter of persons, saying, I'm of Him, so I've got to defend what He says. Yeah, but what He says doesn't line up with the Scriptures. Well, I'm sorry, I have to go after Him. If those people would stop and line up with this book, period, regardless of what anybody says... We'd have more unison. We'd be coming together, striving together, being of the same mind, the Bible says, of the same judgment. 
striving together. What causes division? The I want tree. I have the three trees out there. The I want, I want, I want tree. I want lust of the flesh, therefore I'm going to corrupt the Bible so I can have lust of the flesh. I want the world and idolatry and things of the world, so I'm going to corrupt the word of God so I can have it. And if anybody comes after me, I'm going to promote backbiting and whispering, mocking, name-calling, bearing false witness, railing for railing. And what, is that all, what do both those things do? They cause division. I've got my three trees out there. That one tree that forks, and it's, I call it the division tree. When these other two trees get strong, when a brother becomes about me, myself, and I, I want, I want, I want to please my wife. I want to please my, uh, for the sisters of Christ, I want to please my husband over pleasing God. You can please your wife, you can please your husband over pleasing God, no. Pleasing your children over pleasing God, no. Pleasing yourself, I want, I want over, Lord, what do I need and what do you want? What do you want, Lord? Okay. So yeah, uh, it's, this should be our standard, period. That's, like I said, one of the problems is, is, our own values. No, our values need to line up with the Bible. This should be our value. And we'd all line up. He has a plan for each of us that will one day become clear. Okay. Right now, his plan for us as a brother or sister in Christ, the basics are here for everyone. But I believe what the sisters Christ, brothers of Christ talking about is in ministry. Some, some sisters in Christ are like, I want to do more for them, I want to do more. And you need to learn to be content with what God has for you. You're doing great for him, brothers and sisters of Christ out there. Being a keeper at home, uh, you know, having bearing children, raising the children, admonition the Lord, making sure that home remains a Bible-believing, God-fearing home. You stay in the Word of God every day. You stay in prayer every day. You're a verbal witness when God opens doors. Okay, you try to be a living witness so the world can see Jesus Christ in you. But some of the sisters of Christ jump the gun and they try to go over and try to be in and do things that are that only for men. Okay. And there's men that uh, God can call you to do a great work for him. You can start out with something little, little. I know a brother in Christ in Canada that God put it on his heart that he started going out gospel tracting once a week. He'd get a whole stack of gospel tracts, make them on his computer and everything. He'd make them throughout the week. And one day a week he'd get out there and he would gospel tract once a week. Go out of his way to gospel track anything and everything. Hand him out even. Right? It can start out small. You don't have to have this, I wouldn't recommend a battle building, but you don't have to have this huge ministry where you have 500 people, a flock of 500. And everything. No. I have two, I have trees, I have a lot of trees out there, but on the mountainside, I have a tree out there where it looks like it's almost dead and it just has a few spots where it's got green leaves and it's been alive and it's been sitting there for several years. And it's still alive and kicking, but it just doesn't look like much. And it's right underneath the huge pine tree that just seems so huge. And that small tree, I call that tree my content, being content tree. Be content. Yes, you'd like to be like this big tree, but God has you doing this right now. And what God has you doing is important. We need to learn to be content. The Bible talks about being faithful and little, those that are faithful and little are faithful and much. If we complain and whine about be, the little, be, being used to little things, and we're not being faithful in them, then how's God going to be able to use us in much? Just something to think about. Right? But yes, one day it will all come clear. Someday we're all going to get caught up, we're going to have the mind of Christ, and everything will be revealed to us. We're going to look at God will probably show us our lives and say, Hey, this is why I said no. This is why I said not right now. You know? This is why, you know, you were that little tree, because I needed you to reach these people that these big trees can't reach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's using you, brother, says Christ. Don't think that God isn't using you. Now, you're going to be wrong. If you're holding iniquity in your heart, or you're messing around with sin and wickedness and worldliness, God's going to hardly use you, or use you as a bad example. The number one person that's going to try to use you if you're living like that is Satan. Be careful. Be careful. All we have to do now in these difficult and uncertain times is pray, pray, pray. Back to the letter, pray. And he will listen. Bible says, pray without ceasing. Okay. 
Uh, let, let your requests be made known unto God. If it, you know, pray. Absolutely. Paul talked about always praying for you. Always praying for the brethren. All right? Pray, pray, pray. That is important. You need to have a strong, healthy prayer life. And you need to have a strong, healthy Bible reading life. And Bible studying life. And taking the Word of God in your, and put it in your heart and living it. You need those two strong, healthy lives in your walk with the Lord. And then applying the Word and living it's the third part and final part. Pray, read the Word of God, study the Word of God. Third part is apply it to your life. And you always pray, Lord, give me the strength to apply it to my life. Give me the strength to live your way. Give me the strength to do things your way. We thank God for all he has done for us, and we pray to him every day. So, brother, this is it again for now. Thanks again for the beautiful Bibles that you, could, that you got. Uh, to the new three uh, Bibles that go out to three new Christian families. We are now going to conclude with a few photos. I'll share some of the photos if I haven't already because I went in editing. It'll take care of in editing. So that's this, brother, sis, Christ. Okay. Thank you for the, thank God for answered prayers. The Bible's made it okay. And like I said, there's prayer for this, brother, sister, Christ, as they're doing work for the Lord overseas and gospel tracting and trying to get Bibles for people and their travels. Okay. And then that one Bible, please put it on your prayer request. That one Bible that the Sister in Christ would like to get, it's out of stock. And I know how that is because I've been trying to look for another one of these. Because this is starting to fall apart a little bit from wear and tear. But I wanted, I tried to do this big book over here for highlighting. But they used thinner paper on it to make it lighter because it's the larger. It's large print, huge print. And... When I was trying to highlight some of this, it kind of tore the paper a little bit. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to highlight this that much anymore. And I'm going to try to get another book, like another Bible exactly like this. Because I don't like commentary. I don't like the, the notes on the inside. I just want the Word of God. And I can write in little things if I want to. And I have a little bit. But I, I want to do some highlighting. When I went back to look for this book, this I mean this Bible, it has no commentary. that has good size print. It's not large. It's got the thick nicer, stronger paper where I've already done highlighting in. Let's see if I can find a page. There's a page where I did a lot of highlighting in. There's another one right there. So I wanted to get another one of this, and it's not in. So I'd like some prayer for me too, Jesus Christ. I keep looking for a Bible like this. I found one that's like it, except that they put the words of Christ in red, and I don't like that either. People say, well, why not? Because there's times they'll put things in red that, uh, that they won't put. There's a lot of, this whole Bible is God's Word, period. But then when you put Christ's word in red, you think, well, those are the only words that matter. And they're elevated above all the words in this book. No. Man spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is all God's word. This is all Jesus' word. To us. Jesus is God. All right. So that's a good prayer request for me. All right. But pray for that sister in Christ that we can get her the Bible that she wants. All right. And remember the difference between want and need. And remember our, our Bible study we just did on to give or not to give. We're here to help the brethren out. Okay? When you see that there's a brethren hurting and they're in need, and, it's, and God has blessed you with the ability, the power, and the strength, and the finances to help a brother in Christ out, you should help a brother in Christ out. Okay? So, I want to end uh, this this video, this updated video, but I want to also end with an exhortation. We've got a lot of exhortation in here from the letter. Praise God. Thank you, brother, sister, in Christ. But I want to end with uh, Psalms 118, verse 2, and then we're going to do verse 14. Psalm 18 is a long... I was sitting out there thinking, well, I can spend a few minutes and go through a psalm. So I sat there and started going through Psalms 18. It's a long psalm sitting there talking with the Lord. But Psalms 118, we'll go verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust with my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. One of the joys we get to have, brother, says Christ, is in, in, this, in thy salvation, the salvation that God has given us. No matter how bad it gets down here, we, we, we look to Jesus Christ saying, hey, you can catch us home someday. Uh, but regardless, in death or in life, death, if he catches me home in death, or in life, 
I get to go be with Him someday. And there's a joy. And it gives you peace and helps us get through the hard times down here. But I just wanted to read that to you, okay? The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Brother says Christ, I keep pushing this in my life and I'm going to push it in yours too. Trust the Lord. Trust, trust, trust the Lord in these last days. You have brethren that are trusting in gold and silver. You have brethren that are trusting in the works of their hands to get them through if we go through hard times. Trust the Lord. Now don't just sit there and twiddle your thumbs. I'm not. Okay. But the point is, is our trust is supposed to be in God. Okay. We're supposed to trust God. Whatever happens, happens. God's will be done. He knows what he's doing, no matter how bad the world's getting. I've been praying for the body of Christ that as the world's devouring one another and destroying one another, they want sin and wickedness. America wants sin and wickedness. They're devouring one another and destroying one another. God protects us. And God can use us to be a light to this dark world. Okay. Uh, verse 14, all the way over to verse 14. Here's a good one. Let the words of my mouth, I pray this all the time, Lord, use me. Let my words be good words. Help give me the right words, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. I already mentioned there's times when my brain starts wandering. I'll say something, I'll be talking to the Lord about something, and I'll say something that reminds me of a movie or a video game or a TV show, something worldly, and my mind goes off on it for like four minutes. Sometimes it goes off on it for just a few seconds and the Lord can help me catch it. Sometimes I start indulging it and it goes on for like three or four minutes. Okay? That's not acceptable in His sight. And I want to be acceptable in His sight. So that's something I, pr I pray. Let the words of my mouth, your mouth, Brother says Christ, my mouth, and the meditation of my heart, your heart, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. The meditation of my heart. I talk to the Lord about the salvation He's given me. I talk to the Lord about His Word. I talk to the Lord about the body of Christ. I talk to the Lord when it comes to the Word, the body of Christ. When it comes to His Word, the, the lost of the world. The meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Why does it have to be acceptable in God's sight? Because He's our strength. He's our Redeemer. He's our King, capital K King. He's our capital L Lord. He's our Master. He's our Savior. He's our Teacher. He's God. He's our friend. He's God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. That's why. So once again, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Thank you, Brother Sis Christ, for your prayers. And thank God for unanswered prayers, answered prayers. And I just thank you for your support of this ministry. So I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm going to end this video with grace and peace from God our Father. And our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you, brothers and sisters, in these last days. And my love for you, we're supposed to love one another. My love for you, and what's that love in? Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.